Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. and today we're going to learn about the law of cosines. Um, so the law of cosines tells us that in any triangle, ABC, um, we can uh, set up this type of equation. So here I have three different scenarios, so this will depend on what information we're given. Um, but if you look at patterns for these three, I'm going to generalize a pattern here. It's always going to be our opposite side squared equals adjacent side plus adjacent side minus 2 times the adjacent times the adjacent times the cosine of the angle that we know or are trying to find. So if you look at these um, three more specific equations, it's just different variations of this generalized pattern. So again, it's opposite side equals adjacent squared plus adjacent squared minus 2 times adjacent times adjacent times the cosine of the angle that we know or are trying to find. Okay, so one scenario where we can use a law of cosines is we, when we have two sides and the included angle. So let's sketch a picture of what we're given. So it says in triangle ABC. Remember, my um, picture is not drawn to scale. It's just to kind of give us an idea of the relative position of our information. So it says A is um, 46.5 degrees. Side B, which is opposite angle B, is 10.5. And side C is 18.0. So if I look at um, what I have, I see here that I'm not able to use law of, co of signs, which we learned in the last lesson. So remember, to use law of signs, you need a pair of um, angle opposite sides that you know. So here's a perfect case where you say, okay, I can't use law of signs. I guess I'm going to try um, law of cosines. So you'll see that if we have this angle, this would be adjacent side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the opposite side. So that means we can set up the equation A squared, that's the opposite side of the angle we know, equals adjacent squared plus adjacent squared minus 2 times adjacent times adjacent times cosine of angle A, which is 46.5 degrees. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And this entire thing is what I'm going to plug into the calculator. So whenever you're um, doing a problem like this, I'd like you to try to plug it all into your calculator at once. Um, if you do it all in one shot, it really reduces the margin of error when we're going to round. So try to plug this entire thing into your calculator. So here uh, you should get that A is approximately 13.2 if we round to the nearest tenths. Okay, so once we know um, side A, we don't actually need to use law of cosines anymore because I now have a law of sines scenario. I know a pair of angle um, and opposite side, so I can set up a law of sines equation. Now here, we do want to be strategic of um, which angle we find first, because I want to remind you that the range of arc sine is between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees, which means that arc sine can only tell us an acute angle. So I'm going to go out of my way to try to find the smaller angle first. So remember, if you compare the opposite sides, I see that the side opposite C is 18, the side opposite B is 10.5. So we know that angle B is less than angle C, which means that angle B must be acute. So if we know that angle B must be acute, um, then when we use um, law of sines to find it, whatever um, calculation or decimal approximation we get from our calculator must be the answer because arc sine can tell us an acute answer. Just keep in mind it can never tell us an acute, an obtuse angle. So we always try to pick um, the smaller angle when we can. So let's set up our um, equation. So we know sine of B over 10.5 equals the sine of 46.5 degrees over 13.2.
So the next step that I would really like you to show, I want to know exactly what you're plugging into your calculator. So I want you to show the step B equals the arc sine of 10.5 sine of 46.5 degrees over 13.2. And then try to plug all of this into your calculator at once. And you should get approximately 35.2 degrees. Now remember, um, since we know that B is our smaller angle and therefore B must be acute, we don't need to um, think twice about this answer. We know that this is our only answer. And now we can use the triangle sum theorem to help us find um, angle C. So we know that angle C is going to be 180 minus 46.5 minus, minus 35.2 so angle C is 98.3 degrees. So notice here, angle C is an obtuse angle. Um, so if we had tried to find um, angle C using law of sines, we wouldn't have gotten the correct answer um, because uh, arc sine, again, cannot give us an answer that is obtuse. So make sure you're strategic when you're picking um, the order in which you solve. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give this example a try. Okay, let's check your work. So here, um, with a given information that we start with, we can't use law of sine, so we're going to try using law of cosines, which allows us to find side A, which is approximately 11.7. So once I have side A, then I can set up a law of sines equation. So I need to decide, should I start with um, angle B or angle C? Well, I know that angle B is less than angle C because of their um, opposite side lengths. So I'm going to start by finding the smaller angle because, again, I know this is repetitive, but it's really important you understand. Arc sine can never tell you an obtuse angle. So we're going to pick the angle that we know to be acute. And so angle B is approximately 21.2 degrees. And then using the triangle sum theorem, we see that angle C is 133.8 degrees. Okay, so before we do um, our second example, the a different case that we can use law of cosines, there is something really important to know about arc cosine. So of course we use arc cosine when we're solving for the angle. Um, it's really important to know that the range of arc cosine is between 0 and pi, which in degrees is 0 and 180 degrees. So why do we care about this? Well, because um, unlike arc sine, arc cosine can give us acute and obtuse answers. Okay, so arc cosine works really well when we have an angle that is obtuse. Um, so when you use your calculator, it will actually be able to give you an answer that's between 90 and 180. So we don't have to worry about that restriction um, that we had with arc sine. We also don't have to worry about having an ambiguous case where we get um, maybe multiple triangles or maybe no solution. So just keep in mind that arc cosine is really great because it can tell us both acute and obtuse angles, unlike arc sine. Okay, so now let's see how we can use um, the law of sines for this um, second case when we are just given three sides of a triangle. So here we're given three side lengths. I'm going to put them on a triangle. Again, this triangle is not at all drawn to scale. So side A is 5, side B is 8, and side C is 12. So here uh, we can use law of cosines to find any angle we want. Strategically, we're always going to start with the largest angle. And again, the reason for that is that arc cosine can calculate obtuse angles. So we're always going to start with the angle that 
um, is largest and therefore is the only one that might be um, obtuse. So we're going to start with angle C. So angle C is our largest angle because it is opposite the longest side. So for finding angle C, we can set up this equation. Opposite side squared equals adjacent squared plus adjacent squared minus 2 times adjacent times adjacent times cosine of C. And now um, here we're going to isolate cosine of C. So it's going to be 12 squared minus 8 squared minus 5 squared divided by negative 2 times 8 times 5. Again, I know we could simplify this, but we're going to plug it all into our calculator. So um, I'm just going to keep it exactly how I see it in the original equation. This is the step that I do need to see. I need to see that you are, have solved completely for C, angle C. So C equals the arc cosine of 12 squared minus 8 squared minus 5 squared all over negative 2 times 8 times 5. Now when you're plugging this into your calculator, it's extremely important that you group what's in your numerator, and then you hit divide, and then you group what's in your denominator, um, or else your calculator will follow order of operations and it won't do what you think that it's doing. So if you plug this in correctly, you should get a decimal approximation of 133.4 degrees. So that's angle C. And now since we have um, a pair of opposite side and angle that we know both values, we can finish the rest of this triangle by using law of sine. Um, the other nice thing is we've already found our largest angle, the, and it is, in fact, obtuse. So when we use law of signs, we don't need to worry about either of these because we know that they are both acute. So it doesn't matter what order we go in here. So we can say um, sine of 133.4 degrees over 12 equals the sine of angle A over 5. So A is going to be the arc sine I'll keep this an equal sign for now. Um, the arc sine of 5 times the sine of 133.4 degrees all over 12. Again, please try to plug this all into your calculator at once. And uh, we should get a decimal approximation of 17.6 degrees. And then from here, we can find angle B using the triangle sum theorem. And we get that angle B is 29 degrees. And there you have it. The important thing to do here is just to make sure that um, when you are using a uh, law of cosines, you start with the largest angle because arc cosine is really good at giving us an obtuse answer while arc sine is not capable of doing that. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give this example a try. We'll check our work in just a few seconds. Okay, so again here I am going to start with angle C because I know it's the largest angle um, because it is opposite of the longest side. So um, I can find angle C using law of cosines and I get approximately 129.8 degrees. And then from here, I can set up a simple law of sine equation, and it doesn't matter which angle I find first. So in this case, I found angle A first, and then I found angle B. If you found angle B first and rounded slightly differently, your answers might be um, off by a tenth or two, but that's totally fine. All right, so now we're going to um, talk about a really common type of law of cosines problem and that is a navigation problem. So the trickiest um, thing about these type of problems is um, setting up the picture. Um, the actual solving part is not too bad. So here it says a pilot sets out from an airport and heads in the direction north 20 degrees east. So let's say this is uh, the starting point. And um, if you see something like this, north 20 degrees east, that means we need to start at north, so I'm going to draw in a little north-south line. 
So we start at north and we um, draw an angle that's 20 degrees to the east of north. Remember, east is in this direction. So I'm going to draw in an angle that looks like this, and this from our north line to the angle I drew, this is 20 degrees. Okay, so it says he's flying at 200 miles per hour, and then after one hour he makes a course change. So that implies that at the moment he uh, makes the change, he has flown 200 miles, again 200 miles per hour, and he was flying for one hour. So for this course correction, he's now going to head in the direction of north 40 degrees east. So I need to draw in a new north-south line. And remember, from north, I head 40 degrees towards the east. So that's going to look a little bit more like this. Maybe that's a little over-exaggerated for 40 degrees, but our pictures are never perfectly drawn to scale, so that's okay. So again, we start north, and then we had 40 degrees to the east, and the um, angle between is 40. Okay, and then it says half an hour after that, so since he's flying um, 200 miles per hour and it's been half an hour, that means that this distance is 100 miles. Um, he says he makes an emergency landing. Um, so this is the flight path he takes. Um, so first they ask us to find the distance between the airport where he started and where he lands. So that's this distance right here. Okay, so for us to do a law of cosines problem, I do need to figure out what this angle is. So we're going to use some parallel lines. I know that these two lines are parallel. They're both north-south lines and they're cut by a transversal, so this angle is actually congruent to this angle right here because they are alternate interior angles. So this small sliver is um, 20 degrees. Well, I know that straight lines add up to um, 180, so that means that this segment is 140 degrees. So if I add up these two angles, I get 160 degrees for this total angle. So that um, will allow us to do law of cosines. So we can say opposite side squared equals adjacent squared plus adjacent squared minus 2 times adjacent times adjacent times cosine of the angle, which again we said was 160 degrees. So x is going to be the square root of all of this. So that gives us approximately, uh, let's say, 296 miles. I'll just land to the, or I'll round to the nearest whole mile. All right, so now we can move on to part B, which asks us to find the bearing from the airport to where he lands. So we want this direction, which means we do need to find this tiny little sliver in here, which I'll call theta. And we can actually use law of sines to help us find theta. So we can say the sine of theta over 100, the opposite side, equals the sine of 160 degrees, which remember is um, this angle right here over x, which is 296. So theta is going to be the arc sine of 100 times the sine of 160 degrees all over 296. So that gives us approximately 6.6 .6 degrees. So remember, that's just the distance from here to here. So now in order for us to write this as a bearing, we're going to add 20 and 6.6, .6, and we'll write it like this. North, 26.6 .6 degrees east. And that is our bearing. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about really quick um, is a really useful formula. It's called Huron's formula, and it can be used to find the area of um, triangle ABC. Um, and we only need to know the side lengths ABC to find this area. So it can be useful when you don't know what any of the angles are. So the formula is the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C 
Of course, A, B, and C are the sides of your triangle. So S, this new variable, is defined by half of the sum of all three sides. So first you have to find that S value, and then you just plug it in to this formula, and that will tell you the area of your triangle. So let's look at this very last example together. Uh, here, find the area of a triangle with side lengths 125, 280, and 315. Again, this is nice because we don't know any of the angles, um, so we can easily find the area using Huron's formula. So first we need to find that S variable, which is 1 half times the sum of all three sides. So that S variable is going to be 360. So remember the area is S times the difference of S and A times the difference of S and B times the difference of S and C, A, B, and C being the three um, sides of your triangle. So it's going to be 360 times 360 minus 125 times 360 minus 280 times 360 minus 315. And if you plug this into your calculator, and let's round to the nearest whole number, uh, we get approximately 17,452. And then we would say units squared. And there you have it. So this might be a useful formula um, that might be worth memorizing. All right, uh, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.